Today on the IoT show, Mehul Shah from Cognizant is going to tell me everything I need to know about Cognizant Connected Factories and how it helps industrial automation customers build their IoT solutions fast and efficiently. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the IoT show. Uh, I'm Olivier, your host, and today we'll talk about industrial IoT. And we have Mehul Shah from Cognizant with us. Mehul, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. So Mehul, tell us a bit about, so we're going to tell people about Cognizant and, and what Cognizant is, one of our top partners for IoT solutions. But then we're going to talk also about some of the challenges, some of the toughest challenges that our joint customers are facing when building IoT solutions. Um, because industrial IoT is not simple. We have a set of Lego bricks, uh, the Azure IoT services for building solutions. But still, there is a, a ramp up. There's lots of things that need to be done in order to aggregate all of that and gather data from assets that are already existing and deployed and make sense of all the data that's going to come from these assets to then extract the insights and take action. So it's not easy, and you guys uh, are here to help. So tell us a bit about yourself and Cognizant real quick, and then we'll jump into the solutions you guys are offering. Sure, Oliver. This is, uh, so I'm Mehul. I'm part of Cognizant's uh, Internet of Things uh, business unit. I'm a principal consultant and a solution architect. And, and yeah, to your point, uh, Microsoft Azure provides a great platform. There are a lot of uh, services that help you build your IoT solutions. And we treat them as like smaller Lego blocks. But there is uh, still some journey involved when it, uh, when it comes to building an application, an industrial 4.0 application, where, you know, just those Lego blocks, uh, if you start with them, you know, you will end up spending more time than you like to. So what we have done is, with our Cognizant uh, uh, Connected Factory Solution, we have built our larger Lego blocks, if I can say so, you know, uh, leveraging the underlying smaller Lego blocks that uh, Azure platform provides in terms of using, you know, IoT Hub and related services and in terms of, uh, you know, some of the other past services for storage and analytics and managing microservices, et cetera. What are, so what are the top challenges that we're seeing our customers facing? So there, I guess, are a lot of things that are very common across the various customers, and that's why you're offering that layer on top of Azure IoT services to serve the customers. So what are the top challenges your solutions are addressing so that these customers don't have to implement or reinvent the wheel? Great question, Oliver. So uh, in industrial IoT, right, uh, some of the common use cases are about, you know, hey, our customers, our manufacturing customers specifically, want to leverage their investment in control and automation system in their plants. They, can, they know they are collecting a lot of data, but they want to use that data to generate some insights that they never generated before, like, hey, what is my asset performance like? Or what's my plant or line where, you know, operating, you know, uh, uh, OEE like, right? Uh, and when is my pump going to fail and things like that. But but the data sources are very many. The automation systems, you know, vary from one plant to another, one vendor to another. And, and the data that you collect basically, you know, comes in different forms. And if you start with that and try to build the, you know, the, the KPIs uh, that are uh, relevant to your businesses, uh, you will you will face challenges. So what our solution does is it basically introduces a common data model in between that kind of delinks, you know, the data collection from data cons uh, consumption. So if you are developers focused on, you know, collecting data from industrial assets, you can just use our common data model uh, uh, that uh, essentially is a collection of your, you know, uh, uh, the key entities and their metadata and the measures and matrices, matrices that you will use to build your applications, uh, you know, for industry 4.0 use cases, and just translate the raw data that you get from different uh, plant assets that comes uh, that may come in different ways over different protocols, and translate that to, into common data model. But what it does is it allows the application, you know, uh, developers to build the applications and you know to build the calculations for uh, uh, KPIs 
just based on that common data model. So the application developers don't have to know how the data is collected from the different plant assets and the and the developers on the uh, on the device side don't need to worry about how this data is going to be consumed by application. I see. So this basically gives you a repeatable way of you know building applications and basically scale them you know uh, from line to line, plant to plant, and across the customers. I think you came up with a couple of slides to to illustrate a bit of what you just described here. So I think it's going to help us understand even better, you know, what Cognizant's uh, connected factory solution uh, does, especially for developer. Let's uh, take a look at these diagrams that you brought. Sure, Olivia. So, so here, as you see, uh, you know, on the left, uh, you're collecting data from your plant assets, typically what uh, call as telemetry data. And the plant asset is telling you in its own language, uh, you know, what it has produced and what's the quality of it by using tag like, you know, retest and part count uh, and all of that. And, and then you already have some of the metadata related to your plants in terms of what's the, you know, standard operation time, what's the cycle time, which are already there pre-built in the solution. So what you do is, you basically aggregate these two. So, uh, you know, if your cycle time is 35 and, and, and if the telemetry data suggests that it took 45 seconds to uh, produce the part, you know, you know that there was some downtime and you update your downtime, but you know that the part was good, you update your good part. And that is, you know, the common data model that I was talking about. I mean, here it's a, this is a very small snippet of it. But uh, in its comprehensive form, you know, uh, it, 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 it defined it as uh, all the key assets and, and the and the entities uh, and the metadata and the measures and metrics uh, matrices that you would need uh, you know for your applications and generating insights uh, related to your specific use cases for industry 4.0 so there but is calculation let me ask you one thing, hold real quick. So the, this common data model, is it defined by some entity, some standard bodies or uh, how how did you come up with that common data model? So uh, just architecturally, it's it's uh, in many ways it's an age-old you know best practice of having uh, a data model like this that delineates you know the data consumption from you know data production, but uh, it it's a very comprehensive exercise because uh, there are very many uh, uh, industry 4.0 use cases uh, uh, and and what we have done is we have defined the common data model for all of these use cases and the and the KPIs that you uh, a customer would typically need uh, and and if you are familiar with uh, the open manufacturing platform that Microsoft announced at Hanover MSA last year uh, then the 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 objective of open manufacturing platform is to uh, make it easy for ISVs and manufacturers and SIs like us to build industry 4.0 solutions and not just accelerate it, but also be able to easily scale it. But but they know that uh, one of the key challenges is like interoperability of the data and the you know the data silos that you have to deal with. So even OMP is looking to address uh, you know this challenge by coming up with a common data model that industry will eventually adopt. And we at Cognizant, we have made you know a beginning of our own basically towards that journey. Love that. Uh, so let's um, let's dive into your solution a bit more. I think you have another diagram that shows what are the various bits that are actually used and, and how you're leveraging microservices to build a layer on top of the Azure IoT services. Sure, so uh, uh, just uh, a few more seconds on this. Uh, uh, as, as, so there is this calculation engine that is nothing but a microservice. This is where you will do a lot of custom development actually, uh, working closely okay. with your customers, uh, mapping the raw data into the common data model. Uh, you write the code for the, uh, for the calculation engine, the platform uh, of a solution provides you the engine to run it. And once it is done, I mean, as you can see, the KPIs like availability, performance, OE, and all, they are very uh, industry standard. Uh, some plants may have their own variation in terms of how they define OE, but uh, you know, the solution comes pre-built uh, you know, uh, with all these uh, microservices that let you uh, calculate these KPIs, and you can go and make the changes the way you like. And then you can take all of this asset information and you will also be collecting some, say, condition data like, you know, hey, what's the RPM of my pump and how much it is vibrating. 
uh, you can take the asset performance data and then the condition monitoring data and you can generate deeper insight you know like the remaining useful life uh, of your assets or even hey when do i need to do some corrective maintenance so how do you realize this in uh, uh, using uh, underlying azure uh, components and services this architecture depicts that uh, if you are familiar with the microsoft azure iot reference architecture uh, this shouldn't be yeah you know <laughs> much of a surprise to you uh, on the left you have data sources it's your plc and scada system and other different automation system that are you know the primary source of data for you for, for from the plants but you may also be collecting data from other data sources so you use iot Edge and iot hub technologies to collect the data from from the plant assets you may also use a data factory if you are collecting data from other sources and once the data is pulled into azure you run it through the pipeline you do the uh, uh, streaming analytics, you can store it in different forms using different uh, storage services that it uh, Azure offers. And then you can make the data available uh, for consumption by, uh, you know, different application visualization and also to third parties. But the key aspect here is the solution comes uh, pre-built with some of the uh, microservices which are laid out here on the top. And the key ones are like asset manager. So what asset manager does is once you have defined all the plant related metadata using say is95 model that allows you to define the plant and the asset hierarchy and all of that captured in an excel sheet the asset manager services just pulls it in so you don't have to worry about defining that you know yourself in your solution calculation services uh, you know this maps to the calculation engine that we talked about uh, here uh, you will do more custom development than any part of the solution actually where you map the uh, the plant metadata the constant that you have and the raw telemetry data that you get to translate that into the common data model after that once the data is translated there application engine application services kick in and we have pre-built uh, application you know engine uh, for uh, calculating OE, calculating availability, and you know different uh, uh, industries uh, standard KPIs, and then we also have some analytics model built in for you to do so generate some deeper insights, basically uh, uh, using the data that you collect. Awesome. So all these bits and pieces, all these uh, these microservices. So you will be helping our customers actually deploy them on their own Azure. Um, uh, subscriptions and eventually customize them a little, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, this can be deployed in the customer's Azure subscription and and customize to specific uh, client need and the use cases for the use cases. Looks good. Uh, looks so good that I want to see uh, it deployed and see how it looks like and how uh, the customer is actually going to interact with your solutions. Sure. So, okay, so here is our uh, connected factory solution. I already logged in, as you can see, and right now I'm in the configuration mode. And what you see here is the, the plant configuration, essentially, you know, details around all the plants and the assets uh, and the related metadata. How it is pre-populated is using the asset manager microservice that I was talking about earlier. So this is where you will go in and you can select uh, pre-populated Excel sheet where you have defined all the plant related metadata uh, using ISO 95 model and you can just pull it in and you know basically it gets uh, populated. So along with the plant information you may you know define different shifts that are there in your plant. You may need some different constants that uh, you will need for your uh, different calculations. But once you have pulled in all the asset metadata, the next thing you would do is uh, configure your uh, uh, calculation engine and the app engine. So remember the calculation engine is the one where you are taking the raw data coming in from the plant assets, aggregating it with the other plant metadata and the constants, and mm -hmm. then translating all of that into the uh, into the common data model format. So okay. I've already created, you know, one rule here, but the experience here is if I go and say add, uh, you know, edit it, it, it walks me through a step-by-step -step process. It says that, hey, can you create, uh, select the asset that, you know, you want and select the, uh, 
uh, variables, uh, uh, you know, the tags that are, you know, you're collecting from that particular asset. And after that, if there are some constant that you want to use in your calculation, you can do that. And if there are any temporary variables, as we developers call it, uh, you know, you can define here as part of the cache. I don't want to do anything right now. And, and then here it gives you all the different, you know, uh, variables from the common data model that uh, uh, that are already predefined in the system. So at the end of it here, you will basically just be writing a script that defines how do you take the raw data coming from the plant asset, apply the different constants, and how do you translate that into the information, you know, in the in the common data model. So, so that that is your uh, you basically set up the um, the infrastructure by importing the information about the assets and then setting up the calc engine to establish the rules and, and well generate the common data model establish the little rules right and so then we're going to see you know how it looks like for the users right yeah exactly so the only code you essentially have written so far is the script in the calculation engine uh, mm -hmm. there is app engine as well that comes with uh, some pre-built uh, rules and services so here is my oe related rule and essentially, it, it provides you with the same experience. If you want to modify the script, uh, uh, it does that. But Calc Engine takes you from the raw data model, uh, raw data for, to the common data model, and then App Engine basically uses the data in the common data model and calculates, you know, different KPIs. So once you have set this up, you uh, basically need to go to the dashboard view, and then I have. A, uh, device simulator running on my other computer. I just uh, fire it up and it's already configured to send the test uh, telemetry data that maps to the assets, etc., that are already predefined here in the system. And if I go to the dashboard, here is what it is. And, you know, basically your OE and other uh, uh, KPIs are there on the dashboard for you. Nice. So, yeah, nice. And actually, just noted that there's been no line of code. Actually, you did everything in that UI that uh, Cognizant Connected Factory solution offers, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, yeah. The only line of code you write is is is, those, is in those Calc Engine and App Engine if you need to modify that. And once you've written that code, it gets stored in the blob storage and using expression uh, evaluation. You know, it gets applied at the runtime. So. Oh, awesome. Well, Mehul, that's a comprehensive overview of the uh, Cognizant Connected Factory solution and how our uh, initial IoT customers or, uh, you know, people going through that digital transformation for initial automation uh, can leverage your solutions on top of the Azure IoT services. Uh, if people want to learn more about Cognizant and the Cognizant Connected Factory solution, you can go to aka.ms slash IoT show slash Cognizant Connected Factories in one word. Uh, Mihul, thanks a lot for joining the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Olivia. Thank you. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. Hope to see you soon on the IoT show. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.